Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Front Stretch. I am Justin Malillo. I am alongside Michael Massey, and we're here to talk to you about our uh, pretty insane night at Watkins Glen International virtually in the Pro 2 Trucks uh, off-road Lucas, whatever it was, in the Monday Night Racing League. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a pretty crazy night, and, and Shane Van Gisbergen, I hope I got that right, uh, if I didn't, he's, he's some supercar champion, uh, pretty, okay. pretty okay. Known, um, he ended up taking the win by over four seconds over Will Rogers, who won this race last year, the ERL champion, Adam Cabot finished in third. And then you had guys down the field, like Stefan Wilson, Kyle Bush, Preston Pardis, David Schildhouse, Anthony Alfredo, DJ Cummins, and, and Gary Sexton rounded out the top 10 there. You had other guys in the field, like Dylan Welch was in the field, Garrett Smithley, um, Ron Caps, um, the guy who won last week, Matt Stalkinek. We'll get back to him in a second. Chad Reed, we'll get back to him in a second. Uh, so on and so forth through the field. But uh, yeah, 30. 36 cars took the green tonight, or 36 trucks took the green tonight. Uh, how did your race go, Michael? So my goal for the night, I'm kind of like Sterling Marlin and Jimmy Spencer used to be, where when they got to the road courses, it's like you just knew it was going to be a bad day, right? You just <laughs> didn't set the bar high. So I just wanted to have a top 30 and finish on lead lap. And I did both of those. I didn't drive off the track once, so I'm very happy about that because that's been – something I've done a lot in the past on road course races. Uh, so I just did that and brought it home 29th. Uh, pretty quiet day. Uh, I would say some of the fiercest battles I had would be with uh, Mike Clay with ESPN, which is pretty cool to have him out there. But uh, ESPN needs to get him a little better internet, apparently, because he was blinking all over the place. Uh, but still, we had some fierce battles, and it was just pretty cool to – you know, how about you? How did your race go? Uh, mine went okay. Um, I mean, I, I had to get around Mac, Mike Clay at one point too. And yeah, he was like a Christmas tree out there blinking. Uh, his internet wasn't that, that great. Uh, but you, we both ended up beating him. You, you ended up 29th. He ended up 33rd. Um, so, so that was good on that front. My night was filled with a, a lot of Matt Stalkinek's bumper. Uh, like I said, he won last week and tonight he was surprisingly, um, not as fast as he probably wanted to be. And somehow I ended up being a little bit faster than him at one point. So I spent, I, I swear to you, I spent about 10 laps, an entire fuel run trying to get by him both before the pit and after the pit. I thought when he pitted, I could like go and, and try to overcut him and, that didn't work out. I still ended up behind him and I, I, I was behind him for a good, <laughs> about half the race. It felt like, um, but um, on that, on that final restart after that crazy uh, caution period, which was very long, um, I ended up ahead of him and stayed ahead of him. And, and we ended up 20th at the end of the night, which was nice. um, pretty good. It was, it was not great. It was not bad. Um, like you, my goals were to finish and, and we accomplished that. I got into Steve, uh, Steve, a there at the end. He, um, he was going for it. Steven Ellis was going for it. Garrett Miller was going for it. Um, Brandon Brown, like you said, or have you talked about Brandon Brown yet? But not yet, we'll, but we'll was, get to Brandon Brown yeah. too. And <laughs> he was a little bit sideways and there was like this whole cluster right in turn one on the final lap that was pretty insane that i think i passed like three trucks uh there so p20 for me i'll take it um the pit strategy definitely was uh, a a key factor in in my race and and i think in everybody's race because yeah. they only gave us two sets of tires and they only uh they every time um every 10 laps you pretty much had a pit you couldn't go more than i believe 11 or 12 laps on fuel so you had to decide which pit stop you were going to not take tires or if you were going to even take tires at all because the tires really didn't wear it was about the heat in the tires so um did you end up taking any tires tonight so i took tires during the competition caution it was a 40 lap race had a competition caution at the halfway mark um 
which was a little a little shady the way it came out. It, it caught a bunch of guys uh, like yourself, right, on uh, coming into a closed pit road, uh, you know, just trying to wait to the last possible second to pit. Uh, but I didn't do that. I pitted under the caution period, and that was the only time I took tires all night because it just – it wasn't worth the time that – you know, it was like a 20, what was it, 21 second stop taking tires. Mm -hmm. And you, I took a fuel stop in 11 seconds. So right. it wasn't worth giving up that much time. And I saw in the first run, in that first 10 lap run, um, after that, Chad Reed came in, took four tires because he was way ahead of me. He comes out, you know, I'm right behind him. And my teammate at Eric Bodwin Racing, uh, Eric Bodwin Front Stretch Racing, uh, Drew Welker uh, was right in front of Chad Reed and he spent the whole time leading up to the competition caution trying to get by Drew and the fresh tires and everything he couldn't get around him those two had some had a fierce battle I thought they were going to wipe each other out but they they displayed their talent and didn't but it just showed the tires weren't really worth sitting in the pits for that long I didn't think I mean how many sets did you use I only used one as well. Um, I, I used it. So you were talking about that, that crazy caution and, and pit. I, I ended up getting bit by it somehow. So race control comes over and he's like, okay, so the caution is going to come out when the leader hits the bus stop. So I'm like, all right, so I'm going to go in and I, I start moving and, and making it to the line. And like milliseconds before the line, he's like, which is right now. And throws the caution, and as I'm entering the pits, and I'm like, no, are you kidding? <laughs> so <laughs> it ended up, um, I think it ended up catching me a lap down, which they they waved me around, and it, it put me back. Somehow it put me back in, like, 21st or 22nd on the restart. So I'll take it. It was definitely probably not where I was supposed to be, but uh, the game never black flagged me, so I will... Uh, gladly take it. Um, it was a weird caution for sure, um, but we're we're we've got that in the past now. And uh, looking at the the point standings here, can I look at the point standings? Uh, I would assume that um, one of the the real racers is going to be up in there. Uh, let's see the season three standings. DJ Cummings is actually leading the points. Um, so DJ's. Yeah, DJ's got, uh, I want to say, three-point lead over Anthony Alfredo, who was uh, a Championship 4 guy last year. And DJ was a Championship 4 guy with me in, in Season 1. So, um, you know, those guys are up front. Josh Slate, David Schildhouse, Robbie Lyons. Uh, that's the top five right now in the point standings. We're going to Bristol on the dirt in the trucks. How you looking? I don't know. I got the same philosophy on dirt that I got for road courses. Maybe I just suck on everything. But, <laughs> no, I'm not that great of a dirt racer. But I do think I can do a better job on dirt than I can on a road course. And we did, uh, you know, when the when they first released the Bristol dirt, we did some, this league did, you know, just some playing around Bristol dirt races. And I wasn't terrible. Because it, it doesn't really drive like most dirt tracks. Um, so you don't really have to pitch it in and, you know, power slide and all that as much as you do for normal dirt tracks. So I can do a little better um, on Bristol dirt than regular dirt, I think. What about you? I have the same philosophy. It is dirt. It is not my wheelhouse. And like you, I, I kind of question myself whether I'm good at anything uh, as well, <laughs> um, ex especially on, on dirt. I didn't really, um, I, I, I don't know. It's weird. I have a weird relationship with dirt personally, but uh, we'll see what happens. It's, it's, it should be a good time. We should have uh, some heat racing or something that'll happen next week to set the field. So uh, I just hope I make the uh, the main. Same, same. Oh. I'm more excited for the week after, though. Um, where, where are we heading? We're doing the the Indy 500. Oh yes, yeah. The tradition for this league, and uh, I've gotten a top ten in it before in this league, so I think I can do that again. And this time, there's there's some money on the line. I believe you you wrote about that today. Um, yeah. Deal Monday Night Racing signed with Napa Auto Parts as a presenting sponsor. 
Yeah, that's huge. I mean, you don't really see that in, in sim racing besides like the real official stuff. Like the Coca-Cola series is is like the the anomaly of, of anything, but that's the top drivers in on the service. Now you got Monday Night Racing kind of joining that on a on a level where they're going to be handing out cash prizes all throughout the season and at the end of the season uh, with Napa Auto Parts stepping in and, and taking the the entitlement from uh, from Tufco. But Tufco is not going anywhere as far as that goes. They're, they're still part of this, too. So, I mean, Monday Night Racing, they brought in Napa. They brought in Tufco. Um, I've seen that that Rowdy Energy, which Kyle Busch participates in our league. So that kind of makes sense that, that they're part of that. Um, the big green egg has been uh, a huge part of, of the league since the, the beginning. Um, it, it's all on that, that podium bar at the, at the bottom during the, the beginning of the broadcast. So, uh, it's going to be really cool to, uh, to see how that all plays out and if it changes anything as far as people racing for money now or anything, I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. I, I just, I, I just want to show up and have a good time. And I, I felt like I had a good time tonight. Same. I'm, I'm in this league to have fun. I don't really care about because, you know, it doesn't really change my life where I finish on a weekly basis. So, right. yeah, I'm still having fun. Um, but, yeah, so if you if you guys want to read uh, more about the Napa title sponsor, uh, read what Justin wrote earlier today on Front Stretch. What else you got over on Front Stretch coming out? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be hitting up the virtual Front Stretch, which – I already got the text message from Tom. We're going to be changing the name on that one. We got to we got to <laughs> figure out a new name for it because it's not that catchy. I get it. It's all it's it, it was just a name made up in the moment. So and it's <laughs> it's kind of stuck with me for now. But uh, check that out. Whatever it may be, untitled sim racing column for now. Um, and I'll be covering Monday Night Racing in there. I'll also be covering um, FTF Racing League, which uh, I'm I'm a big part of that and. Um, I've also got a hundred percent cup series who's reached out to me and they like getting their races covered in there. Uh, I'll cover the iRacing road to pro series in there, which is really great. Uh, I'll back copy anything that, that our, uh, iRacing writer, uh, Brandon Half is put in, uh, over the week, whether it's the eNASCAR Coca-Cola series or the eNASCAR pro invitational series. Um, so a lot of good stuff in there. Definitely check it out. Uh, what do you got coming out this week? Uh, so nothing this week, but uh, okay. I bi-weekly write a column um, along with Kevin, Kevin Rutherford uh, called Fire on Fridays. Uh, so check for that. We're always taking on the hot takes of NASCAR. Uh, most recent one I wrote was uh, with Brad Keselowski. Is he considering cup ownership? I'm just kind of looking into that. So give that a read if you haven't seen it yet. That's uh, definitely a spicy take there. I, I, I don't know if I've ever considered that, that he would be considering that. Well, he talked about it a couple of years ago when he shut down the truck team, that mm -hmm. it, it's a goal of his. And I mean, why would that goal go away in just four years? Very so good point. I, don't know, it's, I would never rule it out. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We'll uh, definitely keep tuned to that and uh, keep tuned to our, uh, our, weekly recaps of, of Monday Night Racing and uh, thank you all for watching uh, catch us next time uh, hopefully we have better better results than tonight yeah, sure. uh, real quick let's thank some sponsors oh yeah thank, uh, Eric Bodwin for chipping in for me this season uh, he's that's a giving guy right there he's supporting a whole bunch of people in this league and across other I racing leagues and of course thanks to Front Stretch the the employer for uh you know, let me put, let me represent them in this league. So you got anybody to thank? As always, thanks to Front Stretch for, for letting us do what we do. Um, really getting our names out there. And uh, thank you to, for, to Traction for, uh, you know, supporting me as well. And uh, thank you to Monday Night Racing, Podium Esports, and, and everybody involved with uh, putting on these, these great Monday nights for us. So, uh, uh, yeah, definitely. Catch us next time, everybody. We'll uh, we'll see you on the track.